this is your this poem. is my this is the song that puts me in a vulnerable place okay. happy place sad place <laughs> so many places <laughs> basically but it's your tune but it's my tune man Oh, no, I'm not singing no, no. Come on, man. <laughs> you got a good voice. <laughs> no, no, no. We'll leave the singing to Sarah. No, not gonna be. <laughs> so is this not gonna be like career number three again? Nope. No. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so Solange brings up some the emotions of happiness, sadness, mm. um, and just she basically takes you there. So it makes me think back to um, your journey and your journey through depression because that is a significant <coughs> part of you know your life story um, and your dad is an instrumental part of that because obviously when you did decide to take your life mm. um, he was the person the last person you called and he was the person who stopped stopped you from being successful right he was nearby because mm. At that particular time, you know, I, I tried to check out, and that's the reality. I tried to check out within that particular time, mm -hmm. and um, took a load of pills, mm -hmm. and just tried to wash it down with alcohol, and just, just literally, just gave up right at that particular. That was a a difficult time in my life, going through lots of transitions and circumstances that I just wasn't coping well. My mind was breaking down. So yeah. So your triggers were obviously the injuries that you were kind of tackling through that through your your professional career, alongside um, the kind of the knowledge of you kind of being in a team that you I guess you you didn't. Yeah, I think fundamentally it's not just down to um, my career finning, finishing as such. It's 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 the whole journey. So you mentioned journey in what you were saying earlier and I really believe that it's the the whole picture it's the whole process of the journey going back to you know going back to my first um, relationship mm -hmm. going through my first divorce missing my children day in day out going through for, uh, financial uh, problems and you know having to deal with that as well and then my first career coming to an end through injuries they, all these things happen at, you know, such a uh, kind of short period of time um, can can definitely take effect. Yeah, definitely, it definitely, you know, damaged you. So yeah. to the point of obviously that you, you wanted didn't, to, yeah. to, to, to give up. So then, but when you didn't, you weren't successful, and then you said to your your mum or your family when they when you woke up and realised that you hadn't done that, so it didn't work. Yeah, that was one of the most selfish things I probably could have said at a time of mm. of uh, vulnerability from my family um, being that they was all around my hospital bed um, me actually waking up was disappointing for me at that particular time but that's where my mind was at mm. so you'd never understand unless you'd gone through what I was going through the process that I was going through you'd never you'd never actually understand that but um, when I look back at it now, it was very selfish, you know, what, mm. what it did to my mum that day when I actually woke up and said that was quite traumatising for her. So um, I regret saying those particular words, but mm. when did you're... you apologise for that after Yeah, that? of course. Okay. But uh, when you're in, like, that kind of state of mind, mm. is, is, you know, to judge someone that, you know, really doesn't care about his existence anymore is, you know, you've got to be pretty shallow mm, to... Yeah. Uh, to, to, to point fingers, you know? Yeah. But through the love of your family and mm. your many supporters, you've kind of come to come through that episode, found a new career, conquered yeah. that career, and now you've retired. Mm. So, like, where, what next for you? Now, I'm filming a, a documentary yes. uh, film called Ten Count which is about my journey but also incorporates mental health awareness into the documentary which enables me to go out and film other athletes mm -hmm. get into the real core of why sportsmen have or sports athletes shall i say 
um, have so many issues within mental health and why there's so many um, you know kind of negative effects mm -hmm. with the with the industries that we're in mm -hmm. so um, you know I, I, I'm doing my best to continue to raise awareness and this documentary is a massive film that will put me into a position to be able to tap into these areas so you've kind of um so do you think football and now boxing how, how well do you think those sports are equipped to handle or to support players and the fighters that you know draw in the big money for the, the clubs and for the promoters well you're talking about two different sports mm. whereas within football there's especially in the premiership there's an ex um, bundles of money mm. um, but then there's lower leagues mm. it's not just about the premiership so you might have issues within the uh, premiership with certain players but because they're on 50 60 70 80 grand a week or whatever it is they're on then it's kind of ignored mm. but yet still if, yeah of course because because there is a, a, a an also a situation where because of the earning uh whether it's the potential or the actual current earning that they are obviously involved with, there there is like a, a bit of an ignorance to the point of like that they still how, why should you suffer f from any mental health issues when you're earning X Y Z each week? Mm -hmm. It's totally irrelevant, really. It's not really down to money. It's, it's, it's okay. Everyone's journey is different anyway. Do you know what I mean? So we don't know what one goes through behind closed doors, mm -hmm. regardless if he turns up every Saturday and Tuesday to to play a football game. Um, that's his job as such, but he's still got to handle the outside pressures and mm. and things that go through. And there's, there's, like I said, there's there's like other leagues that we don't even hear about because now they're not on TV, and now there's players that are struggling that maybe don't get seen to as such. And in boxing, there is no money and there is no really help okay. at all. Okay. At least we got that in football there's the PFA there's a professional football association there is things that footballers can get help with but if he, if a boxer during his career is struggling mentally and even after his career who do they exactly go to because I'm not entirely sure um, so that is what I'm trying to figure out as well what help we can um, push into boxing because there there is no help. You know, there's so many boxers that have to still work, still train and fight, um, and doing the two, which I did for a little while. Um, so without sponsorship, there's another issue uh, with with boxers just trying to survive. When we come back into I guess normal life, you see that mental health issues cost our economy nine billion pounds per year mm. through people obviously taking sick and not being able to be in present but not actually being present at work so this is a, a it's obviously something that starts from uh you know the elite sports but it filters down as well in society life. yeah yeah Agreed. so i mean is do you see this uh you know the government have been talking a lot more about an mental health what do you see but there's no firm policy do you what, there, there's no firm you, policy what, but would they... you get involved in helping to make policy because Already, your your you coming forward and being so open with your life yeah. has helped many people. Would you like to be involved in, in maybe coming up with some policy? I think um, even with my film that I'm doing, mm -hmm. is going to allow me to break through and and get into the areas where I feel like I can be mm. a massive help. Um, until you get to the the really terrible circumstances of like you don't want to be here anymore that's when things really do take effect with things like the NHS that's when they really can help but if you're not one of them people that are kind of you know wanting to obviously take your life mm -hmm. then it can be a little bit long-winded of the actual help that you get okay so it's it's getting help to those people before they get to prevention yes yeah that's 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 the that's the key method in moving forward is is trying to come up with the the prevention side of things rather than waiting for tragedies to happen and yep. then acting so i've got you safely back home 
and you've got your event on tonight which you're speaking mm. at what's mm. the event it's the black british entertainment awards it's their first one and they've invited me to just speak about like what i'm doing now they found me inspiring i've been observing me over the years and um yes it's, it's going to be a really nice event so be nice just to speak about my my film and that and um give a give yeah and oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah trying with the talk Wicked. Liam McKenzie thanks for nice joining one. us on my car life stories Wicked, thank you